from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award of the Year and the Best Education Show for 2017. I'm producer and host John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an instructional support program for intermediate level English learners. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs and get closer to your goal. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds and for people from all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our th current thematic unit is Native Americans. This is segment one of episode 81. In our last episode, we learned about the peopling of America, the first Americans who crossed over the Bering Land Bridge. It's a pretty awesome thing to ponder, for these were people who were the truly first to truly discover America. For fans of the TV show Star Trek, they were the ones to boldly go where no man had gone before. Well, I'm sure survival was a struggle, and I don't want to minimize that struggle, but these first Americans had the singular experience of settling areas that had never been settled by people. I can't imagine an adventure that would equal. When we finished episode 80, I related some of the creation myth of the Cherokee people. We left off with a great buzzard crafting the mountains that would characterize the homeland of the Cherokee people. I also stated that in the study of Native Americans, we would encounter many stories that are advantages, that many stories is what I should say, and there are always advantages to listening to everyone's stories. But we should also ask ourselves some questions. Who is telling the story? I acquired the Cherokee creation story from a book entitled The Portable North American Indian Reader by Frederick W. Turner III. He kind of sounds like a professor. Well, he's a professor of folklore whose stated purpose is to bring to the general reader the traditions and historical realities of the American Indian. I told the story word for word as it was in here, except I didn't try pronouncing the native words that were used to name the characters. Now, in this sense, I invested a great deal of trust in the story's authenticity. After the question of who is telling the story, the next important question is why are they telling it? What purposes are they trying to achieve? This question is critical. This story seems to be told to explain the creation of the Cherokee people and how their world was created. The questions of who and why will be asked repeatedly as we explore the Native American people of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's share a little bit more of this Cherokee creation story. So here we go. When the earth was dry and the animals came down, it was still dark. So they got the sun and set it in a track to go every day across the island from east to west, just overhead. It was too hot this way. And the red crawfish had his shell scorched a bright red so that his meat was spoiled and the Cherokee do not eat it. The conjurers put the sun another hand breadth higher in the air, but it still was too hot. They raised it another time and another until it was seven hand breadths high and just under the sky arch. Then it was right, and they left it so. And this is why conjurers call this place the seventh height, because it is seven hand breadths above the earth. Every day the sun goes along under this arch and returns at night to the upper side to the starting place. Now there is another world under this, 
and it is like ours in everything, animals, plants, and people, save that the seasons are different. The streams that come down from the mountains are the trails by which we reach this underworld, and the springs at their heads are the doorways by which we enter it. But to do this, one must fast and go to the water and have one of the underground people for a guide. We know that the seasons in the underworld are different from ours because the water in the springs is always warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer than the outer air. When the animals and plants were first made, we do not know by whom, they were told to watch and keep awake for seven nights, just as young men now fast and keep awake when they pray for their medicine. They tried to do this, and nearly all were awake through the first night. But the next night, several dropped off to sleep. And the third night, others were asleep, and then others, until on the seventh night of the animals, only the owl, the panther, and one or two others were still awake. To these were given the power to see and to go about in the dark and to make prey of birds and animals which must sleep at night. Of the trees, only the cedar and the pine, the holly and the laurel were awake to the end, and to them it was given to be always green and to be the greenest for medicine. But it was the others, it was said, because you have not endured till the end, you shall lose your hair every winter. And so that's another part of the creation tale of the Cherokee people. Now, while the very first Americans had been gone for thousands of years, hence we can't learn directly from them, the stories that are handed down from generation to generation can give us clues about the people who are here today. Perhaps we can learn about beliefs that go back many generations beliefs and ways of seeing the world that may be very different from our own. The hope would be that we listen and respect these ways of seeing the world. Native Americans have had thousands of years of collective experience in living in the land we call home. We might just have some very valuable things to learn from all their experience. Now, the video which started our last episode was about the early Americans who came over the land bridge from Asia to populate America. It was believed that the Clovis culture was the first to populate the American continents. Let's watch this video as yet another story. It's all about the Clovis culture, but the emphasis is on what happened to them. <laughs> 